You can see from some of my other YouTube videos that I like to customize and scratch build HO scale model railroad locomotives in brass. For many years, I have considered building an American styled Garrett articulated loco. Garrett's were a very successful mechanical design used just about everywhere in the world except North America. Here is the result. A 464 plus 464 double Hudson and for the amusement or maybe disdain of my Penzi friends, I am calling it a PP1. why Garrett Locos were not adopted by American loco builders, when, on the other hand, the Malay design was so prevalent. Some sources state that the reason was reduced locomotive traction as fuel was consumed, referring to the experiences with triplex locomotives. I wonder if there weren't other issues also. Monsieur Anatole Malay reportedly never received one Swiss centime in royalties from any American builder. Herbert Garrett passed away at a relatively young age and his principal licensee was the Bear Peacock Corporation from Manchester, England. Bear fiercely protected this patent and was responsible for building over two-thirds of all Garrett locomotives they even proposed some super Garrett's for the American market, but found no takers. Maybe this protection of intellectual property played a part. Before showing model construction details, let's look at some background information. Whether fact or fiction, it is important before starting any modeling project to gather and study as much relevant material as possible. In this case, Durant's books and other publications were very valuable. I finally decided upon the double Hudson configuration after securing a Penzi L1S boiler at a swap meet and two Aristocraft 10-wheeler junk locos from eBay. The sand dome and pipes were removed from the boiler and then all protruding devices below the lower running boards. The power reverse on the engineer's side would not be reused, but the air pump here was to be attached higher up. The real expense was $150 for two Northwest Shortline Stanton power drives, where the DCC decoder wires were snipped and then shorted with small solder drops for pure DC operation only. These little power bogies are true model engineering marvels and meant that the 10 wheeler drives could be free rolling. Next sub project was building the carriage or cradle which suspends the boiler between the drives but rides on the powered bogies. After removing motors, the 10-wheeler frames were cut and drive gears were removed. Suspension platforms for the cradle and tenders were epoxied over the former gear cavities and the die-cast retainer plates 
were then replaced by new plates made from brass bars. Testing at this point revealed that more engine weight was needed so the bogies wouldn't slip. Adding the steam pipe connection box under the ash pan provided a space to add weight which nicely lowered the cradle's center of gravity. This box is very particular to Garrett locomotives and provides a shield for both the delivery and exhaust steam for the rear engine. Next was to construct the tenders. The technique I use is to first use cardstock to form the templates for cutting the brass sheet. These templates are snipped, folded, and bent around roughly formed wooden blocks. Using simple tape, the templates are then used as mock-ups. After cutting the brass sheet from the template outlines, the wooden blocks are then used as soldering jigs. Most soldering was done with a resistance probe or tweezers. Note the grounding wire attached to the vise. Handrails and smaller parts were done with a pencil iron. And some smoothing or welding was done with a small butane torch. Observe the Penzi accents. Boat bow, inspired by the T1 duplex. Keystone emblem, typical Penzi induction antenna on the rear tender. And then Penzi solid cast pilots, both front and rear. The model is starting to have character. were then added to the cradle. Penzi air tanks, water pipes on both sides, stoker engine, etc. Boiler details then completed the project. Most obvious are injectors where the sand dome had been. The air pump was raised as mentioned previously. An extra tank replaced the power reverse Plus, other small details were added or modified on the boiler. And here we have it.